Hey guys, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program! My name is Twitchy, and last time we sent a two-craft mission to Minmus, only to find out that our secondary craft didn't have the communication capabilities to even get itself away from the mothership. After the fun and frolics of sending up a repair craft and using the Kerbal Engineer skills to make the first ever Kerbal Engineer and a robot repair, we've separated off our exploration craft, and with Bob Kerman hanging to the side like a hero, we're going to get all the science we can from Minmus. Once again, my name is Twitchy, and welcome to my final career. Bob Kerman, first Kerbal to walk the surface of Kerbin, to walk the surface of the moon, the first Kerbal to orbit. This Kerbal has done things unimaginable by any other Kerbal out there, and today he sets another high point. Hanging onto the side of a rocket by the mere grip of his hands, we are headed to the poles of Minmus, whereupon we're going to hit as many biomes as we can, traveling back to the mothership where we left Valentina and Bill Kerman behind. But traveling from the equator to the poles of any planetoid, even one as small as Minmus, is not a journey you undertake without time acceleration and did you know that Kerbal Space Program will not let you accelerate time if you are hanging on a ladder with a Kerbal. So I have thrown caution to the wind and Bill is drifting alongside the rocket right here. I feel like I can just use my jetpack and fly back and grab the ladder and even though that worked perfectly I don't think we'll be seeing that technique at all during the rest of this mission. I kind of like just the four times acceleration that we've got running here and letting Bob hold on. I'm a little bit worried that if he drifts too far then I'm going to be ended up on a bit of a time crunch while we're flying towards the floor at tens of meters per second because you know we are on Minmus and, and that's the type of situation I don't want to be getting into one that panics me every now and then I will stop and make sure through the power of the EVA report that I am over the biomes that I'm looking for and eventually we find out that we are indeed over the poles I drift a little bit further and wait for my nav ball to start spinning out the only reason is if I want to make a decision to go down one of the other sides of Minmus rather than the way I just came from more towards the pole will let me go in any direction that I want. Coming in for a very, very slow landing here. Minmus is one of the first low gravity moons that you are going to encounter and patience is the key here. Which obviously means I don't do very well at it. Your main job here when coming down on a low gravity moon is just to try and manage your velocity. You want to get down as quick as possible, but you also want to be able to stop before you hit the floor at that quick as possible pace. I like to come down to about 100 meters above the surface and then try and keep my speed somewhere between 10 and 3 meters per second, obviously being slower as I get lower. Touchdown is a bumpy affair, but one that I can safely say leads to the surviving of my Kerbals and that's kind of the most important part of any of this. When we've slowed down enough that I feel like we can shift our focus over to Bob and do some science, we do so because that is the purpose of our mission here. We are going to try and fly this thing to every biome and pick up all the science available to us. This is why we're bringing Bob because he can clean and restore the experiments. But how do I know where all the biomes are? Well, you might remember that we have been using a mod called ScanSat since the very beginning of this playthrough, mostly to get altimetry maps, but actually one of the things that we've got a little bit further on is the multispectral scanner, and that gives us a biome data. This map here is a map of all the biomes, and opening up this map here, we are able to place waypoints down. The thing is, I don't understand the waypoint system at this point, so I'm just kind of clicking around randomly, but what you need to do is to place the waypoint down on that map, and then go to your normal Kerbal map. Oh, sorry, you first you need to set a name first. Very important. I nearly forgot that again. And once you've set the name, you go to your normal Kerbal map and set that as your navigation target. But at this point in the mission, I don't know how to do that. It's this mission where I figure it out. So I'm going to stick with the plan that I originally had, because as I say, this whole planning feature was a bit of a bonus to me. I thought I was only going to get the map and the flat square map at that. So being able to have a globe and being able to fly for then reckoning by looking at the way that my orbit is overlaid on the top of that map is an absolute bonus to me already, let alone being able to have ourselves a navigation marker on our nav ball. So we take off and I 
I start flying in a random direction. I'm not sure entirely which way we are going, but as the blue marker on my map starts to extend out, I see that we are indeed going in roughly the right direction. A slight overthrust there reminds me of the danger of having Bob Kerman just hanging on by a ladder. We can only, ex only go up to a certain amount of thrust before he starts slipping off, so we've got to keep our thrust low. Thankfully, low gravity planet, low thrusts are quite effective. It's at this point that I noticed the marker on my normal Kerbal map here. There is a, just a little waypoint. You right click it, you hit, hit set as navigation and on your navigation ball, you get a nice little marker showing you that you are going in roughly the right direction. Of course, when you're following navigation markers on your nav ball, up and down are a little bit awkward because you can see through the planet. So you need to go up and over a mountain to get to where you're trying to go. At this point, I'm starting to come in for a landing. I see the bit of highlands that I'm aiming for, and I'm going to be able to bring myself to a beautiful slowdown and stop. I just need to bring my nose up a little bit now to be able to uh, arrest my vertical momentum. I don't have any control. Control has been completely robbed from me. Unfortunately, we do not have line of sight with Kerbin anymore. My one hope is that actually we're burning fast enough that we can get back into orbit going in the other direction. It's about this point that I realize that is a pipe dream. It's time to get Bob off of this ride and try and get him into orbit. It's, ah, oh, it's all gone bad. Um, well, thankfully, I'm not playing a hardcore game, so I can just go back to the safety save that I made at the beginning and think about where we're going. Not in that direction. That's what we're going to do. Thankfully, the Highlands was not something that was particularly difficult to get to. We just need to go down one of these other lobes that we have mapped out here. Whilst Bob is spending his efforts trying to get back to where he was originally, I would like to take this moment right here to thank every single one of my patrons. You see a list of names scrolling up the screen here, and I would like to point out that we have a new name on board. Benjamin, thank you very much. Your donations are going to keep me fed whilst I'm off on my beautiful university astrophysics adventure but more importantly it's going to keep me focused and on track when my friends come up to me and say hey twitchy would you like to go scuba diving in the arctic so we can map out the penguins hunting patterns and possibly find out some new species i'll be my friends no i can't i have to make these kerbal space program videos because these people are relying on me to keep this entertainment churning out every week and i hope you guys are going to join me right here in thanking them one of the shortcomings of this mission is the fact that we can't store our EVA reports anywhere in this craft. That means Bob Kerman can only take one EVA report and that has gone from the poles. We're done there, so if I was going to improve this craft just a little bit, it'll put one of those science storage canisters that are available to us on it. Now, taking a look around on this screen, I can see that we have actually got a lot of biomes around us and more importantly, if I put my navigation marker on the slopes just north of our mothership, we can fly over the Midlands, the Lowlands, and also hit the slopes. Of course, we're coming from Highlands. We've done the poles. That's pretty much all of the biomes. Any other biomes I need, I can come back with a mission that has a science lab attached to it, and we can absolutely harvest this place dry, at least as far as science is concerned. The first hop is only a couple of hundred meters and we are there almost instantly. Bob goes around and collects all the science data. Another improvement I could possibly have made to this is to have a ring of ladders going around and close to all the science experiments. Having to fly Bob on Mimus is not a big problem, but I know there are a few gravity worlds out there that would be much more troublesome. This burn is going to go all the way to our markers here. We have lowlands all the way up to the slope, so I feel like we can get both of those biomes knocked out right on the the boundary over there. I have identified the ridge ahead of me as the marker between the two biomes. So I'm going to come in and try and slow ourselves down. We're headed 150 meters per second. We had to burn that off pretty sharply and because of that Bob has ended up quite low down the ladder. We bring ourselves to as slow a stop as possible in the air and just fly a Bob around. It's the safest way to deal with that. I felt like it was much safer doing that than trying to sort everything out while we were still hurtling through at 40 or 50 meters per second. Coming down really, really slow. Touchdown is absolutely beautiful. And here, of course, we're going to get the Lowlands data. It'd be really nice if there was some sort of action group you could put onto your actual scientist to go around and do all the experiments that are within reach and then collect and restore the data. That would be a very, very handy indeed. I'm sure there's probably something we can do with the actual ship itself. I'll see if we can get it to collect all the science in one go and then all we need to do is, is collect and restore. But I don't know whether we'll get the science bonus for the scientist being able to take the science or whether the robot will technically have taken the science. In that case, we don't get the bonuses. 
Oh well, takeoff is away. We are literally just trying to get ourselves over that ridge, but I am quite scared. The last save we had was up on the poles. It's time to settle down and make a quick save. I, I really, really do not want to have to go and do this all over again. I mean, I've only got one Patreon message a, an episode, so let's try and avoid two messes up an episode. All right, with the saves in place and my eye on the slope just over the way, I spot a small, interesting looking rock reminding me that the Breaking Ground DLC brought a whole new way of doing science, and we're going to have to experiment with that as well. A small roll down the hill, taking me back to my childhood, rolling down grass-covered hills. We get just enough inside the biome that we are able to grab all of the science balanced on the very edge of our engine bell there i'm sure the engineers are aghast but that's fine we're a scientist we know what we're doing actually i was listening to a podcast a little while ago i forget which one big apologies to whoever it is i, I really do like to quote my sources but if they were saying on there that scientists don't know what they're doing but actually they're really good at quantifying their ignorance they are very good at putting numbers and, and limits on their knowledge and uh, if you've ever done an error estimation just module in a course anywhere you know how hard that hits home <laughs> so yes scientists don't know what they're doing but they're very good at telling you that they don't know what they're doing Speaking of things that we don't know what we're doing, I don't know the name of this biome we're currently landing in. It's one of the flats. I think it's the lesser flats, but that's just a guess, and the science will flash past far too fast for me to be able to read. But look at this. It's another Breaking Ground exclusive. It's a funny rock. At some point, we will come back and explore all of these funny things, but we do not have any of the equipment for it right now. Bob is showing the proper use of all scientific equipment there by bouncing off it and finally finding a Kraken drive by grabbing hold of the ladder in just the the right way I was able to put Bob's arm inside the materials bay causing some weird collision freak out and we were just drifting sideways obviously I did not want that happening during this particular mission I'm sure we can make use of it at some point but right now is not the time our mothership is on the other side of those two hills there and we could go as steeply up and over but I do tend to like to come in a shallower angle than that so we're going to go around the mountain instead Bob Kerman is a Kerbal used to traveling in style and I don't think you get much more style than a round Minmus trip on the back of a rocket holding on for dear life against the g-forces that are imparted I mean this is a, a journey to go down in the journals one to remember I'm sure celebrations will be had back at home the landing is coming in quite nicely I'm a little bit off of the actual zone where everybody is so I slow down to a stop and then point myself towards my target do a big thrust and then slow myself down come down for a normal landing everything works out well Bob is going to put down a pen Penrose's Revenge, a flag commemorating his trip. Penrose Revenge, I have been everywhere. I am Bob. And so starts a new saga in this epic. We need to try and get our mothership here standing upright. When we detached the science ship from the mothership, we had a little bit of problems where the decoupler was too powerful and it knocked the ship over. I'm like, okay, we've got a ship here with plenty of SAS, this little delivery craft here. Maybe we can use it to turn this ship upright. We've got a docking port on the top of the mothership and a docking port on top of the spare part ship. Surely we just need to align the two and push them together with a little bit of force turns out no that doesn't seem to want to work for some reason and i am to this moment still not sure why i think that maybe the docking port is a little bit too uh, pushed inside the capsule the p capsule whichever capsule is at the top there but quick saves have been made so i'm going to start trying a few experiments here trying to just use the engines to see if we can't flip ourselves into the correct orientation of course the taper on that fuel tank is it pointing in completely the wrong direction so it's not really going to help just trying to use our engines the spare parts rocket couldn't help maybe the science one can it's got a much better sas unit on the bottom after all but still the docking ports do not want to align we nearly have a bit of luck here, but my engines weren't activated, and by the time I managed to get them, we thrust into the floor. So, actual plan that actually works this time. We're going to send the spare parts rocket into orbit. It's much easier to get stuff from orbit than it is to get it from the surface of the planet, so we're just going to pop it there for whenever we need it. The next thing, I'm just going to have one last try, seeing if I can't bounce it upright. It really isn't something that's ever going to work. So we get the science machine nice and close, and we get Bill Kerman out. Bill has not really done much this episode, but today 
he is out and he is saving the day. He's put the docking port that was on the top of the science machine onto the top of the capsule there, and that's enabled him to be able to stack all the other things, including the robot control on top. That has a bunch of SAS. I couldn't get the large 1.25 meter SAS unit off of it, but we did get the probe control, and that had just enough to be able to point us in the right direction. Everyone looking calm in the capsule, so we're just going to leave a Minmus and put ourselves into an aero break of about 44 kilometers. That's the maneuver we've got set up. We just need to wait to get outside of Minmus's sphere of influence and perform that maneuver. The Kerbal Engineer data at the top tells us where we are, and I stop at exactly 4,175 meters above the surface of a Kerbin, at least as an aero break. I feel like this should have been fine to stop us, but as we come down and start burning through the atmosphere, the trajectories mod tells us that actually we have two more of these to look forward to. The beauty of watching the moon disappear up and across and seeing Kerbin below us, but I just really like the plasma effects as well. Of course, a small reminder that whilst we are under the effects of plasma, we have no control with the Kerbal Space Center. Not really a problem when you have a pilot on board, but any, any other situation, you won't be able to plot maneuver night or even have any control at all. Waving to the Kerbal Space Center as it passes us by there. I was kind of hoping to get down there, but I really only realized when we were flying past that that's where we were going to be. Taking a look at our future trajectory, I see we're going to land in the middle of the crater on the other side of the planet. I like that idea, and so much so that I feel like we can land on the island in the middle instead. We get use the trajectories mod to a full effect here, point ourselves in a retrograde and brace for the burn of the atmosphere. We're coming in at about two and a half kilometers per second as we hit the higher levels of the atmosphere. This is a monumental speed. Two and a half kilometers every second is ridiculous. So we're about to scrub almost all of that off. We've got the island in sight and I am amazed that we are as precise as we have been. Trust in the computer. The mods know what they're talking about, wouldn't you know? We are coming down a little bit fast, so I've got to burn my engine to get the parachutes to actually deploy properly, but it is a beautiful touchdown but more importantly 1600 and change in science points earned there the surface sample from the Minmus highlights is the one hit wonder but the material study coming through with 125 points in almost every biome is an absolute wonder there but with that I am going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure ladies and gentlemen I will see you guys next time we've got a little bit of work to do with some of the science that we are getting in the background here with the mobile processing lab we need to put that up on some space stations but I will see you then when we're going to do that bye